Do you ever wake up with a goal, but in order to achieve your main goal, you have a ton of mini goals down there, and every time you get to your mini goal, you get a knockback, you get a roadblock, and you know, and there's like three or four mini goals, and every single time you persevere, you keep smiling, you know what, it's not going to get to me, I'm just going to go, do the, do the thing that I got to do, the, uh, the, the, the side quest I got to do to knock out the, um, <laughs> to knock out this main quest, and I did all of them, knocked them out, you're talking about like, like I said, three or four goals here, and you're at the finish line, you're at the main goal, and boom, something else happens guys it's been a hell of a day it really has which is uh why i've been you know why this is the first video upload of the day but you know what we do is we keep smiling and we will we'll wake up tomorrow and we'll get things figured out and this is really the only thing that we can do right but we keep we keep smiling we keep a positive attitude and you know in order to release some of this here stress we're gonna go and check out uh new jersey globe and insider new jersey talk a lot of new jersey news because trust me guys i've been seeing everything taking place i saw the red flag bill i saw the meme with like the 48 different um hitters on it so there is uh tons of news and information out in the world right now it's just that I had a very, very tough time, uh, tough go of it today. So with that being said, let's get into the news because there's a story that I want to talk about. But, you know, let's pay res due respect to New Jersey Globe. Um, they have a primer on New Jersey daily print papers, which is something that I want to do. Um, them's uh, school funding assertions. Rothman, that's Linwood Mayor. Why does he look a little bit like he reminds me of Jeremy Piven? I don't know. Oh, Guadano. So, uh, Mark Stein joins Republican Jewish Coalition. Well, okay, with a name like that, I'm pretty sure you'll fit right on in. And uh, that's Gim Guadano. That's the lady that the establishment sent out as a sheep, as a, you know, saying a lamb to the slaughter for Murphy because there was no way in hell a Republican was going to win that election. But the one that I want to talk about, when it, in particular today, when it comes to New Jersey, is the uh, wage theft law that. Uh, acting Governor Sheila Oliver put in, Sheila Sheila Oliver put into um, put, uh, signed today as acting governor because Governor Murphy I believe he's still in Italy he's he's elsewhere because uh, you know Jersey's just not that exciting you know so uh, let's check this one out because apparently activists and business groups are not it's like they're they're a little split on it they, they they're not really feeling it some are some not. New Jersey policy perspective, Brandon McCoy. Huh, pictures I've seen him in. Like, you've seen more dark skin than that. That's a slim dude. All right. Activist business group split on new wage theft law. Recently signed law increases wage theft penalties by Nikita. Yeah, okay. Uh, that sounds like a very Russian name. Either ways, activists and business groups are split on a new anti-wage theft bill. Acting Governor Sheila Oliver signed into law Tuesday. New Jersey workers lose out on millions that they are rightfully owed every year due to wage theft, whether it is unpaid overtime or stolen tips. Wage theft often harms low paid workers already struggling to get by. New Jersey policy perspective, Brandon McCoy said. The new law signed by Governor, by acting Governor, yeah, Sheila Oliver, follows best practices from across the nation and will make New Jersey a national leader in protecting workers from abusive and illegal cost cutting measures. Tighter enforcement as it levels the plane. Tight, tighter enforcement not only benefits workers but businesses as well as it levels the playing field for employers who are who already do the right thing and follow the law. The new law requires that businesses pay back old wages and damages equal to 200% of the same. So, wait a second, to 200%? So you're basically having them like double up? Like, I mean, I, there should be penalties without question, but you're having them double up the, the wages. The, I, that's what it sounds like, at least from what I'm gathering. New Jersey Business and Industry Association Vice President of Government Affairs Michael Wallace said his organization supported wage theft penalties, but was concerned that the law could punish businesses who inadvertently. Is there nothing? Oh, OK, wow. Wow. Oh, man. Globe, you guys need an editor. You guys need an editor quick who in, I guess inadvertently. Um. You know, like they do it by accident. They, 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 they take the they take the dollars by accident. Navigating the complexities of wage and hour laws is often a challenge for employers, whether new or experienced, Wallace said. As a result of this law, employers acting 
in good faith will now be threatened with excessive civil and criminal penalties for unintended mistakes. In certain scenarios, these unsuspecting employers will be forced to choose between protecting their business and defending their rights in court because lawyers, particularly here in the Garden State, are very expensive. So, <clears throat> I mean, make sure your, your accountant's on, on ball, you know? Make sure that the, that the people are getting paid their legit uh, costs, man. I guess uh, the, the fees for accountants are gonna go up. But, you know, I mean, these are things that have already been lost, and they've been lost for a real long time, so. It, and a lot of and, and, and this is really just, uh, I guess, spinning wheels for the most part because, I mean, all you did was, like, how do I put it? All you did was uh, tighten up the the penalties as opposed to, you know, like anything else you could have done, I guess, through the court systems, no permits, um, wage theft, uh, how those numbers are added up, you know. So I'm not sure. Uh, let's look a little bit more at the, what they're offering over here on the globe. Uh, they're doing an in memorandum. Uh, Pole Jersey, New Jersey moves past some gender stereotypes. Yeah, the establishment like that, that Canada stuff. They trying to bring that here, man. Like we already have the drag queen story hours. We got the the history uh, story coming up, which I'm still confused by because they're like, oh well, you know, um, um, people. Who were who had who lived the LGBTQ lifestyle? I mean, they have so many contributions. But my question remains to this moment: What does their what does what they did with their genitals have to do with their contribution? You know, I mean, it's just one of those things. Uh, uh, guess Ali wants a task force to combat racism. Yeah, sure, whatever. Like that's the thing. This is like that's why it kind of irritates me with uh when it comes to our politics because they're just showboaters man they don't care about any of the things that they talk about i mean i'm sure at some level they do or at some level they legitimately think that they're helping but ultimately what they all end up talking about it doesn't do nothing all like uh, when it comes to our government and it comes to the power of our government Every time, in particular, or in particular, when it comes to urban communities, every time they sat, they sit here and say, "Yeah, this is going to be great for you. This is going to work out great." It doesn't, and they've been lying to us forever and a day when it comes to the whole drug war piece. So yeah, like it all comes across as disingenuous. So now we're over here on inside of New Jersey. I'm gonna kick it over here for a little bit. Uh, that's the Four Horsemen. Nobel Prize winning author Tony Morrison has died. Everybody's saying they're talking about it today. I don't know who that is. Everybody says they're talking about all the... Like, whenever somebody dies, everybody kind of... Like, oh my goodness, I was such a huge fan. And, like, this like I this meant, this meant so much to me. This person was so amazing and everything else like that. And I'm looking at him like, are you for real? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know them. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, me personally, it's just like, if, if you know, like, I care when people go like the deal is that like with every soul and every you know um life you know being what it is as far as i'm concerned in my book like it tony morrison's uh passion is no more sad or tragic than those who got gunned down in chicago or um el paso or anywhere else in the country i mean but that but i'm just saying like there's untimely and then there's uh, natural causes trust me i understand i just treat i just believe that in in death there is true equality if that makes sense i know i know that some people that might sound a little uh morbid but um, i don't care <laughs> it's not really about your book it's about mine oh man people uh so let's see um they got their intelligence briefing all in the Democratic family? Huh, we'll, we'll look into that in a second. Dipping into the flavor of Booker's Kool-Aid re retort to Biden. Oh my goodness. They, like the, the elections, the presidential elections are so boring that, you know, like there there is just so little to write about. Uh, joint Rutgers uh, poll, most New Jerseyans are moving beyond, moving beyond most New, Jer New Jerseyans are moving beyond most, but not all stereotyp stereotypical gender views. See, they uh, see. This is why I kind of don't like Insada. Like I like Max. I like the guy that um, runs the spot. But as far as the content, 
nah fam see we need those stereotypical gender views we need we need our family structures back in place and everything that they're doing is to dismantle it and that's how you end up with the shooters and all these different people who are so broken that they're willing to hurt people they don't see what they're doing Governor spokesman Shara Woods statement on Judge Jacobson's ruling to dismiss lawsuit against Governor Murphy's task force on EDA tax in- incentives. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the thing that happened. The uh, task force that uh, Murphy put through the appeals on that were uh, tossed to the side. So you know Murphy's squad gonna come through and investigate. Cheryl calls on the Senate to pass House Gun. Oh, of course, on the ground. New Jersey needs tax-free vacation. I can I can uh, agree with that. Edward Edwards. Something tells me from the picture this is uh, maybe some so, somebody of note. City Confidential, School of Scandalin. I can't demand Moran fires off a letter. Okay. And then there's the columns. We need expanded background checks and a ban on military-style firearms. Like the, you can, this place. The, I mean, inside of New Jersey is so left. Like so left. Oh my goodness. Well, let's uh, check out this uh, story and then we'll wrap this video on up. All in a Family, All in a Democratic Family by Al Sullivan. Hudson County has a political identity crisis. The destination for millennial, extremely progressive agenda, the once powerful Democratic stronghold, still clings to basic policies in the past pro union, pro job, pro development. This is bringing the country into an internal political conflict, especially in regard to immigration detainees and the environment. While cities like Hoboken and Jersey City join forces with conservative towns like Secaucus to ban one-time use plastic bags or styrofoam cups, cups, more significant issues still create a kind of political schizophrenia among county Democrats. Recently, Hudson County officials proposed a a redevelopment project for a formerly contaminated site in Kearney, only to incur the wrath of environmentalists opposed to a New Jersey transit power plant as one of the components. New Kearney has been the litter pan for fat cat politicians for decades, a dumping ground for regional trash that has forced residents to keep their windows closed against the stink, much in the way Secaucus residents used to have to do during the heyday of its slaughterhouses. I mean, this is still Jersey, guys. Uh, it, 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 like, it's, Jersey does have a smell, all right? <laughs> <laughs> the trash dumps and other contaminated sites make it made it impossible for Kearney to benefit from new development much in the way neighboring t- towns like Harrison have. Proposed development on what is called the Copper's Coat could help change that, but Democrats overseeing the development are being confronted by environmental groups that warning that warning against climate change impacts this and other proposed developments in the county might impose. These are activist groups that come out of the drop of a hat against a host of things, whether it is the threat development at Liberty State Park or the massive trains of oil cars passing through Bergen and Hudson counties to Crotox rail yards in Jersey City. These groups have protested the North Bergen power plant, as well as the proposed New York Waterways ferry repair facility proposed for the portion of the Hoboken waterfront. Even politicians, skeptical of some climate change world-ending scenarios, will well know how politically powerful these groups are, and must contend with them. These groups bolster the resistance movement against Governor Christopher Christie's proposed development plans for, Lib- for Liberty State Park, not once, but nearly half a dozen times, forcing local officials to take their side in these conflicts. Most recently, they have flexed their muscles in challenging a power plant proposed for the Meadows of North Bergen, winning important political allies in in southeastern Bergen County. But the most recent effort to derail the proposed New Jersey Jersey Transit Power Station puts them in a slightly different position. Hudson County has been seeking to unload the Copper's Coat property in Kearney for decades, having gotten stuck with this contaminated wasteland after another governor, Tom Keene, required each county to built its own incinerator for disposal of trash. That scheme that would have that scheme that would have climate change activists pulling their hair out had such an idea been proposed today. And actually there's uh talks in um Nork of the SS County um incinerator and uh the complaints about around that. 
These environmental groups are, are particularly furious at Governor Murphy, who on one hand has claimed he wants the state to shift to 50% renewable energy by 2030, and yet won't put the brakes on the New Jersey Transit Power Plant proposal. This may be because he can't afford to alienate Hudson County and its sizable voter base at a time when he could expect a challenge for re-election against Southern Jersey political bosses like Senate President Steve Sweeney and George Norcross. County Executive Tom DeGuise, of course, is puzzled by the environmental protests, claiming the county spent $10 million to clean up the contaminated property and spent $2 million in debt service annually. The proposed power plant would take a huge white elephant and turn it into a viable, ratable for Kearney and... A viable, rateable for rateable, sorry, for Kearney, and take a burden off the county budget. This is Hudson County's second bite at the apple. New Jersey Transit originally proposed to buy the property as a staging area for a sorely needed art tunnel project, a rail tunnel to Manhattan, only to have Governor Christie pull out the pull out of the project at the last minute. So, because I see I'm getting a little bit long into this um article, basically. The business domes versus the hippy dippy domes, and it's the same clash that I've covered on this channel for forever and a day. So, <laughs> now ultimately, that's what it comes down to: is the business, uh, the business corporate class versus the environmental class, and boom, that, that's all that really is. So, with that being said, we're going to bring this one to an end. All the internet stuff. If you liked it, and sorry about the little bit going too going too deep into this article. Um, <laughs> if you liked it, toss it a like. Dislike, go ahead, do that too. I'm not scared of you. Sub if you enjoy my fantastic voice. You want to get videos like this every single day. Share because sharing is caring. And speak. Let me know. What do you think in the comments, man? I mean, is Jersey just too far? Like I, I hate to sound so um, consistently. Uh, I guess downplayed or you know just like oh my goodness all hope is lost but at the same time i mean we have we've spent years decades generations digging ourselves into holes as collectives that you know so many people want to continue just running down not fully seeing the uh, bigger pictures of their actions oh no man this is nuts so let me know what you think in the comments all right and until the next one